accounting 15 variable and absorption costing. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our email address and our phone number, and you will also now find us on Facebook on St. Louis Test Prep, our Facebook page. Before we talk about today's topic, we need to review product versus period costs. A product costs are costs that are traced directly to the product. I'll go back to my example of Levi's blue jeans. Denim, which is a direct material for blue jeans, labor to sew the pants, to cut the pants, the material, these are costs that are directly tied to a pair of pants, direct material and direct labor. Those are product costs. On the other hand, we have period costs, which are costs incurred with the passage of time. The two most common are interest on a loan and insurance premiums that you pay for car or health insurance coverage. So period costs are expensed as they're incurred. The result here is, is that period costs or expenses incurred while product costs are attached to the product. That's what I mean by the results at the bottom of the page. Costs that are attached to the product specifically to inventory. So those direct material and labor costs travel with the pair of pants and we expense them when we sell the pair of jeans. Variable and absorption applies primarily to fixed manufacturing costs. Imagine if you had a service contract to maintain your equipment in your factory and it was a fixed cost of $1,000 every month. Fixed manufacturing costs. <coughs> With absorption costing, fixed costs are a product cost. We expense them when the product is sold and up until then, the costs are deferred. Variable costing, on the other hand, the fixed costs are a period cost and they're expensed as incurred. So with absorption costing, those product costs travel with the inventory and some of the costs are deferred. That's what we say at the bottom. Absorption costing defers costs that variable costing expenses immediately. So we have a difference in expenses between the methods. Jumping over to Excel, I wanted to do an example question and you'll see that we have a basic formula at the top comparing the two methods. If we take our variable cost expenses and we add in those fixed costs that were allocated to ending inventory, that is those that were deferred, we end up with absorption costing. So let's imagine here a question, Acme Corporation has fixed manufacturing costs of $12 a unit. Consider the three cases below. So in the first one, let's assume that variable and absorption costing create the same net income, $240,000, in a period when the firm produces 18,000 units. And the question is, how many units were sold during the period? Well, the 18,000 units is a given. The 240,000 net income is a given. And we can figure the fixed manufacturing overhead as 18,000 units times the $12 a unit to get 216,000. So the one number we're missing is sales, and if you look at the formula here, if we take our net income and then add back our fixed manufacturing overhead, we come up with the sales number because we know that sales less cost equals net income. That's why I put the plug net income plus fixed costs gets you to the sales number. Lastly, we can take are 456,000 sales in dollars and divided by 18,000 units and we come up with sales uh, sale price per unit 2533. The second question says assume the absorption cost net income totaled 320,000 when the fixed goods inventory increased by 7,000 units and that should be a Red flag, if we've got inventory, absorption costing says some of the costs are going to move along with that inventory and be deferred. The question is, how much income is reported using variable costing? Well, the $300,000, $320,000 profit for absorption costing is given, the net income. We can figure how much, how much costs were deferred because we know there's 7,000 units in any inventory, and we know from the question at the top, the very top, that the fixed manufacturing costs are $12 a unit. So if we take 7,000 times 12, we get 
$84,000 in fixed costs that are deferred. And we know from our formula at the top here, right up here, that if I take my absorption costing and I add those costs that were, and I subtract, excuse me, those costs that were deferred, I'm going to end up with variable costing. Because remember that variable costing is going to expense that $84,000, not defer it, which is why variable costing has a lower profit. In the Y section here, I say variable expenses, all fixed costs is incurred, no costs are deferred to inventory, which is why variable net income is less than absorption costing. So our last question, this is the most complicated. Assume variable costing is $220,000, given in the question. Variable costing is a profit of $250,000. So we have a $30,000 difference, and you might ask the question, why would the absorption net income be lower? Aren't they the ones who are deferring expenses? And the answer is, if we have a period of time where we sold inventory, those deferred costs from prior periods would now be expense, which would cause absorption to have a lower profit, because we are expensing costs from a prior period. And the reason we're doing that is some of the inventory was sold. So now the question is, how many units were sold? Well, if we take the difference between the methods, 30,000, and we divide it by the fixed manufacturing cost per unit, which is given at the top of the question, $12, we see that 2,500 units were sold, which is why $84,000 in deferred expense is now expensed under absorption costing. So ending inventory given in the question at the top, we subtract the 2,500 units we calculated here, we see that we have ending inventory of 11,500. One caveat, that assumes that all units produced during the period were sold, which means there's no ending inventory left. That's the end of management accounting. That's the end of management accounting 15. We now have a three hour session essential topics in management accounting you can find the video that previews the course on YouTube our YouTube channel Ken Boyd STL all one word complete listing of videos on our website stltest.net for one-on-one -on -one live tutoring and chat sessions you can go there here's our email address and our phone number thanks very much and we'll see you next time